everyone and welcome to the incredible master bedroom overlooking the city of Los Angeles. This is definitely one of the most beautiful bedrooms I have ever had the pleasure of photographing. The view and balcony are just absolutely incredible. Now, I'm not going to get up here and tell you where to put the camera. I think it's pretty obvious. You'll probably arrive at the conclusion on your own that the camera needs to be somewhere in this corner to capture that view. Now, as I have said a million times before, and I know I sound like a broken record, if you want something to look big, zoom in. You don't need to shoot this at 17 millimeters. All we need to let people know that there is a bed here is a little sliver of it. As you can see in that camera right there, I don't want to distort this bed into something the size of the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier. I mean, it looks like you could land a plane on this thing. So what we're going to do is back up into this corner and we're going to use a 24 millimeter lens, but I'm pretty far from the bed and I'm going to crop in a little bit on either edge to make the bed look a little bit smaller. And like I said, just give a hint of it to let people know that there is a bed in what is obviously the bedroom. The most important parts of this room are that incredible fireplace with that really cool book matched marble, the sitting area, including all this furniture, and then of course the view. Nature is the best art and we have plenty of it right here. We are in kind of a time crunch because the sun is setting and rapidly moving across the scene. And what's great about this is that we're actually getting a little bit of diffusion from the clouds. I don't think I'm going to need to add any additional light to make this look amazing. The time of day is perfect and the view is incredible. Now we have these opening doors that are on automatic sliders. I'm going to compose with them shut. I think that doors like this can go either way. It's amazing to have them open when you're there in real life, but that repetitive sort of mullion between the glass panes makes for a really interesting graphic element. I'm not sure if I'm going to want them open or closed. We'll decide as we get closer to the final composition. The first thing I want to do is rearrange some of this furniture to make the room read a little bit better. As you can see, we're getting a lot of the back of the couch and we're entirely missing the size of the sitting area between the fireplace and the couch. It's also a little bit confusing out on the balcony. There is some sort of chaise lounge couch chair out there. Not sure. We're going to check that out, pull it out and simplify this composition. As amazing as this is, we can still make it better. All right. So looking at this test shot, this looks like a picture of the back of a sofa. We've got to fix that. So let's get our little furniture sliders out and we're going to slide this into a place that I'm happy with. All right, so let's take a test shot. And the couch to me is in a much better space. It really opens up the middle of the room. The next thing I want to do is I'm actually going to take the chair that's in the far opposite corner and I'm going to put it kind of where the couch was on the left hand side of the frame. Right now that chair is blocking the view and I don't really know why someone would sit in that chair with their back to the view when they could sit over here and see that amazing scene out the window. So let's take that chair and flip it. We're going to put it right about here. And I think that'll give us a good, a good start. All right. So I'm going to move the couch a little bit this way. I see a little more carpet than I'd like on the side of the frame. Just trying to find that perfect balance between all the objects in the room. There we go. And the thing I was really looking for is this corner of the chair of the table. Now I'll show you a test shot and that kind of untouched those two objects. So you can see the actual size of the table and the actual size of the couch, trying to make everything as readable as possible. Great. All right. Now there's one more thing that's kind of bugging me. Actually two more things. Number one is that chair on the corner outside. I prefer to take that out and just get a clean view. And number two is the orchid, which is kind of conflicting with the little table out there. So, I'm just going to say, let's pull the table and the couch out and see how that looks. Okay. So we've got all the furniture where we want it. And this shadow is creeping further and further into the scene. So I'm going to try to move quick here. I've got these three pillows on the back of the couch, which are all sorts of uneven. So let's see if we can take a minute and straighten those out. Okay. That light is moving really quick, but we've got everything pretty much exactly where I want it. I've taken out the carpet sliders on this side of the couch because I see it. One final thing I want to do is shift down just a smidge because I'm missing the leg of the couch and I've got more ceiling than I really need. So I'm going to bump this exposure so you can see what I'm doing. And all I'm going to do is slide the lens down just until I catch the bottom of that uh, couch. And I can always crop that if I don't like it, but I'd rather have that be complete than excessive ceiling. So that's looking good. There's only one thing that's bugging me. And if we can fix it in five minutes or less, I'll be a very happy camper. There is a whole lot of sunlight on the back of that couch. And when only half of the couch is in sun, 
your eye kind of goes right to it and it's this big bright object. So I'm going to take this blanket and try to throw it casually in a bit of a California style over the back of this couch. I want this to look a bit lived in and not so sterile. So let's try to loosen things up with a casual blanket throw and let's see what that does. I'm going to decide that the light's moving really quick and we got to get this shot. So what I'm going to do right now is just bracket five shots, make sure I get this. There's a lot of reflections in those glass. I'm going to bracket, open the glass, and that will give me a, two options, either a reflection-free view through the glass or a view with the doors wide open. I'm bracketing five shots, one stop apart, starting at one-fourth of a second. All right, go ahead and open those doors for me. Okay, so our doors are open and it is freaking magnificent. Let's give this a shot. Because we have so much more light coming in, there's a really thick tint on those windows. I'm gonna have to increase my shutter speed significantly. I'm gonna have the middle of my bracket be 1 60th of a second. With the doors closed, I think it was about 1 10th. Okay, that looks insanely cool. But since I've got the time, I can now take a deep breath. Whew. I want to try two things that kind of occurred to me while I was sitting there looking at these bracketed shots up on my iPad. I want to try one shot without that flower. It is a fake flower. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm gonna, that might clean up the image substantially. Some of you at home may be like, take out the flower. Oh, well, I'm going to try it now. And I'm going to see if I can get that blanket to look a little bit better. We have a little time to play with here, so why not? Okay, now I don't need to rerun the bracket all the way. I'm just gonna use my middle exposure, which was 1 60th. And I'll give a new, entirely different option here. That might be it, we'll see. We'll play with them in post-production and see which one I like the best. I'm gonna see if I can mess with this a little more and I'm gonna add a couple people. That might soften this up and make this one of those iconic shots that really markets the property beautifully well. So we've made this amazing bedroom hero shot with the doors open, with the doors shut, with and without models, and with a few different furniture movements. Let's go into Photoshop and play around with what we've got. Okay, so here we have our bedroom shot. We're in front of the computer. And I've got my brackets lined up. I've got the windows shut, the windows open, which is gonna be freaking magnificent, and a few options with the blanket moved around and some models or figures in the shot on the balcony. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I wanna see what I can get away with without going into Photoshop. We got this at the perfect time of day I think we'll have enough dynamic range to just get away with a single exposure. Maybe not, I don't know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. And then I'll open Photoshop and show you a few ways to change up this shot, make it better. Now, on location, I did think I might wanna use this with the windows uh, shut, but I see this now and like those reflections are a little distracting and this just feels so much better to me with those windows open and that crazy view out uh, into the the ocean. Now, like the wildfire smoke, I almost kind of like. It gives it this really hazy sort of ethereal feel. But in any case, let's um, let's jump into the edit and see what we can come up with. I think that my favorite shot has the doors open. I don't really know if I like it with the figure or without the figures, but let's just start with these brackets right here and see where that leads us. So I'm gonna start with these, uh, with these doors wide open. And first of all, it feels relatively cool to me. Um, I feel like this should be yeah, see how blue, it's a little better with the doors open, but I feel like this could be warmed up to more of a golden hue. Like you can see how blue it is when I flick it on and off, that adjustment. So I'm gonna warm that up to 5200 on the white balance. I'm just eyeballing it. I have no science, no sci I hate to let you down, but I have no scientific approach. Um, 
It looks cool. I warmed it up. Now I think it looks better. And you can you can see like it it kind of just it gains that like golden afternoon moment. It's like this warm enveloping feel whereas before it just especially with the doors closed makes a big difference there. Right? It feels like late afternoon whereas this feels like blue. Yeah. I want it to feel warm in late afternoon -y. So I'm gonna play up that warm white balance. All right, enough rambling there. Uh, I like it warmer, end of. Highlights, highlights, <laughs> gonna come down. Um, how much are they gonna come down? I might want to grab this exposure in Photoshop and get some of that blue back. But I, if I bring the highlights down too far, I get the smoke out there, and I want to keep it light and sort of, again, I love that ethereal view. Uh, so I don't need to go minus 100 on the highlights. I'll put it to there. Um, and then shadows can get a little bump. I don't, like, I love that this image has shadows. I don't want to go like this. You know that. The shadows are my favorite part of this shot. So I'll go a little bump on the shadows. Clarity, texture, of course, um, and, and some contrast. Good dose of contrast. Maybe that's too much. Maybe I'll just... But I lose some of that fireplace. So I'm gonna grab a gradient and I'm gonna pull up the shadows on, it's a black, right? It's essentially a black stone fireplace. So I can pull out a little more detail and you can see what a big difference that makes right there. Okay, that's looking very good. I mean, that that's 95% of the picture. Right light, good view. I mean, don't get me wrong. I know I'm shooting an amazing home, but when you have the right light and you have the right composition, it shouldn't take much more than this. That view does feel a little bit, a little bit hot to me. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these edits, I'm going to apply them to these other exposures here, and they should all come out looking the same-ish. And I'm going to do the same for. I think it's this one. This is funky because the green tint in the windows is messing with the white balance. 5208 there does not look like, <laughs> does not look right. So I'm going to do it this way. How does that look? That's got a little more red in it. Pull that down a smidge. That's got a little more green in it. Okay, so I've got these all matched and before I go into Photoshop, I'm gonna take this darker one and I'm gonna grab that as well. Just to get that sky, I love that sky. Maybe we'll go one darker too, so we can get. Ah, uh, that's gonna be too much, but I'll bring it into Photoshop anyway. So let's take all these, one, we've got three brackets, four, five, six images. Edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so let's organize our document. And I just wanna show you a few cool tricks here. Like I said, we got the shot 95% done in Lightroom, but it does need some cleaning up. And we do have a few options, a few different ways we can take this. So I'm gonna go ahead and label all these layers before we get started. And let's go ahead and put our windows closed layer on the bottom. 
What I like about this shot is that it shows the size of these glass panels here, which are really amazing, but the view kind of suffers for it. So let's go ahead and take, uh, let's see, this middle sky exposure. We're gonna work with that. But before I do, I'm gonna go into the channels palette and there's, look, there's two ways I could do this. I could take the pen tool and I could pen tool out all of these windows or, you know, I could just make a selection of, let's see, this blue channel here. I hit Command M, grab a curves adjustment that will apply to that blue layer. All right, there we go. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna uh, command click to activate that selection. Turn on my RGB layers again. We'll take this middle sky, turn that on. And I'm going to apply that mask to this layer. Now, all I have to do at this point is just take like the simplest selection tool, the lasso go ahead and make a rough cutout of everything in here. There it is. All right, I'm going to invert that with a command shift I. I'm gonna take a brush, make sure my foreground color is set to black. I'm gonna just paint out anything that sort of bled through in that uh, selection. And then I'm gonna deselect everything. And now this obviously looks kind of fake and like janky. So I'm just gonna take that soft brush at 30% opacity and paint it out in the foreground. And boom, we have a much nicer sky through those windows. Could I have gone in and lassoed every window? Sure, but that's a very quick and easy way. And we also remove the reflections in the window and we can do it as much or as little as we want. And I can paint over these reflections to completely hide them. Now. I can do a better job blending. I could come in here like this and make a little selection around the window frame. And paint that hard line. And it's gonna be a reflection because we do have that double paned glass. We have got the we've got the window pane and then the balcony pane. but we've gone ahead and significantly reduced those reflections that existed. And they run all the way up. It's probably easier to see in Lightroom, but they run all the way up through that sky. And it's a piece of cake to get rid of them. So say I want the windows open Right? We've got a better sky out those windows. Say you want the windows open. I'll take these two away. I'll bring this um, base layer down. We'll rename this to base windows open. And I want to tame this sky just a little bit. Well, that's very simple. I'm going to grab this mid-level, mid-middle exposure sky shot again, and I'm going to just toss out this mask. Delete layer mask. I'm going to get in here 100%. Use whichever tool you want. Pen tool, lasso tool. I'm going to use the pen tool just because I have a feeling that... I'm gonna wanna get pretty tight in here. And because there's not, you know, 
10 extra lines to make with those window panes in the way, with those uh, mullions rather. It's probably just easier to do this with the pen tool. All right, there is our pen tooled window. Command enter. I'm going to go ahead and feather that edge so it's not a pixel, a zero edge of zero, like a pixel to pixel transition. It's a nice smooth transition. Select, modify, feather. Okay. And there is our sky dropped in. And it feels a bit like painted on there, a little too much. So I'm going to reduce that opacity to 50%. And I feel like it's too strong in the foreground. So I'm going to paint it out a little bit more. There we go. I like that bright, hazy look. There's barely some detail left up here. You know, I can go to zero, 100%. And you can see the difference, but I think, you know, maybe somewhere between 50 and 60% is where I want to be. And again, you can paint out where you think it looks too, too fake. I just want that window to be a smidge blown out because again, if it goes too dark, it's clearly smoke and I don't love that. Uh, and there's a bit of it in here. Again, I'm just taking a brush and lightning, revealing that layer below. All right, but that looks really good. Now, we can go ahead and do a few things with this from here. I mean, I can apply, I can just show you what I mean, um, right? That is too dark. It looks completely fake. That's the 100% opacity, darkest sky. I hate it, delete, get rid of it, kill it, bye. Um, so here's that middle sky. It feels natural, it feels bright, it should be bright. I don't know how much you want to uh, brush in or out that smoke, but in any case, I'm happy with that view. So I want to see what I like better. I wasn't quite sure on location if I like the blanket there or the flowers here. So I'm going to turn that layer on and I'll click to add a black layer mask and I'll just start painting away some of the things I'm not so sure about. There's that. I think the throw looks great over there. Do I want these figures? Do we look good enough to be in this picture? I don't really think so. I don't hate that. Don't get me wrong, I love my assistant, but her wardrobe was not the best. Maybe I could have put her on the right, like over here. But I think this is my favorite. Again, it's very subtle, right? Just bringing back a tiny bit of view. 95% of the shot was there in Lightroom. The next thing I want to do is clean up the ceiling a little bit. I think this could be significantly better if it had less uh, debris up here. So I'm going to go Command. Alt or Option Shift E to flatten all to a new layer. And I'm just gonna start cleaning up. Like there's these little marks in the carpet from the weight of the couch. Take those out. Take this thing out. Honking piece of sensor dust.
and this camera. That might be a little trickier of a clone. So I'm just gonna break this down piece by piece. I'm gonna draw the corner in here. And I'm just gonna pull this little track further left. And I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. See how that looks. Somewhat horrible. So I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. And lastly, the smoke alarm I'm gonna come out. Just take my brush, make it soft, and pull in some of these other pixels. There we go. There's our reconstructed corner, minus a light. And lastly, I'll get this guy. And this vent up here. All right, that's looking really good. There is our finished Photoshop edit, so I'm gonna save this back into Lightroom and polish it off there. Okay, here we are back in Lightroom with our finished edit. I think this just needs a crop and a vertical lines adjustment, so... Can't be trusted. <laughs> Guided transform here really quickly. And a crop, I don't think we need so much bed, nor floor, nor do we need anything left of there. Boom, there is our finished shot. I would consider that a beauty. A little piece of dust there. Perfect, I absolutely love that. There's our finished image. Let's look at our raw, our raw file and see the difference. I mean, again, a lot of subtle adjustments add up to a killer final shot. Let's go get our Twilights on location and wrap up this house. 